let's proceed i have come here only to share the voices and dreams of our children because they are all our children gesture to everyone in the audience so kailash satyarthi signals to everyone sitting in the audience and says that he was there in order to tell everyone that what what do children expect from the world what he was there to share with everyone that what are the dreams of our children i have looked into their frightened and exhausted eyes whenever he has rescued the children from child labor he has seen in their eyes uh, and he has noticed that they are frightened they are the eyes are full of fear they are afraid and their eyes are exhausted they are deprived and they are tired i have held their injured bodies and felt their broken spirits he has also experienced that their spirits are broken they have given up in their life their bodies are also injured 20 years ago in the foothills of himalayas i met a small skinny child laborer he gives us one such example where he met a small skinny skinny means very thin child laborer in the foothills of himalayas foothills are the low hills small hills at the base of a mountain or a mountain range he asked me this skinny child labor laborer asked uh, kailash satyarthi is the world so poor that it cannot give me a toy and a book instead of forcing me to take a gun or a tool and this poor skinny laborer asked kailash satyarthi is the world so poor are the countries of the world so poor that they cannot give me a toy to play they cannot even afford to give me a book that i can educate myself instead what is the world doing with me they are just giving me a gun at such a young age in my hands that i fight against the enemies or a tool they are giving me some tool some equipment so that i can work second example he says in in, in a second example which he gives over there he says i met with a sudanese child soldier soldier he was kidnapped by an extremist militia as his first training lesson he was forced to kill his friends and family so the sudanese child soldier he was kidnapped by a extremist militia militia are the militants rebels and they are very they are called as extremist because they go to extremes right so see how he was given the training the first training of this sudanese child soldier was that he had to he had to kill his friends and family the people who were the closest to him he asked me what is my fault and he asked kailash satyarthi that where was he wrong what was his fault friends all the re- great religions teach us to care for our children and kailash satyarthi says that all the great religions in this world which are practiced in this world they teach us they teach everyone that we should take care of our children jesus said let the children come to me do not hinder them do not obstruct don't make it very difficult for children uh, to come to me for the kingdom of god belongs to them because the kingdom of god is belongs to the children god always welcomes the children the holy quran says kill not your children because of poverty and he says that what is written in the holy quran it is written that one should not kill children just due to poverty friends there is no greater violence than to deny the dream of our children and kailash satyarthi says that it is a great violence it is something which is very very wrong if we are denying the rights of our children the basic rights of our children we are not fulfilling the dreams of our children therefore he says 
that I refuse to accept that all the temples and mosques and churches and prayer houses have no time for the dreams of our children. So there are so many big temples and mosques and churches and prayer houses. Prayer houses are the places where people gather and do collective prayers. So all these people are so well to do. They have a lot of funds. But Kela Satyati says that still nothing has been done in order to fulfill the dreams of our children. And he says that he refuses to accept this, that um, all these temples, mosques, churches, and all these religious places which are there, they do not have a place for the dreams of our children. Children, we have a question here. What does Satyati refuse to accept? So one thing over here, that is, he refuses to accept all that all temples, mosques, and churches and prayer houses have no place for the dreams of our children. The remaining is ahead. I refuse to accept that the world is so poor when just one week of global military expenditure can bring all the children to classrooms. He says that he cannot accept that the world is poor because if we just calculate one week global military expenditure, that is, if we total up one week military expenditure of all the countries, then the amount which we get or which we would get, it can bring all the children to classrooms. And hence, Kailash Satyati says that he cannot accept this, uh, that the world is spending so much in order to strengthen their military, but doing nothing in order to educate the children. I refuse to accept that all the laws and constitutions, police and judges are unable to protect our children. Every country in this world has framed, an, framed laws, has a constitution. There are so many police all over the world in order to provide security. And there are so many judges to give justice to the people and here justice to children but they are all so many laws constitution and police and judges are there but still they are unable to protect the rights of our children he says i cannot accept this i i refuse to accept that the shackles of slavery can be stronger than the quest for freedom he says that he cannot accept that the chains of slavery the chains of child labor are stronger than the quest for freedom, than the search for freedom. Freedom is more powerful and has more strength as compared to slavery. I refuse to accept here. So here we have three points. One point we already saw, and uh, you have to write these three points also in the previous question which I, uh, which we discussed. That is, uh, what uh, does Satyarthi refused to accept. Let's go ahead. My only aim in life is that every child is free to be a child. We have a question here. What is the only aim in the life of Kailash for Kailash Satyarthi? So uh, here he tells us that his aim in life is that every child is free to be a child. They enjoy their childhood. He says that every child should be free to grow and develop. They should develop in their life. They should grow in their life. Free to eat, sleep, and see daylight. They should have the right to eat nutritious food, balanced diet. And they should sleep properly. They should have the right to sleep. Uh, many child laborers, they are uh, they are not allowed to sleep. They are not. Uh, they are subjected to a lot of uh, hard work, and that is the reason that uh, he says that every child should be free to sleep and see the daylight. These child laborers, now they are. Uh, uh, they are usually kept at places where there is no light. Even they cannot see daylight for so many days, and he therefore he says that every child has a right to see the daylight it's free of love free to laugh and cry they they should be given freedom in order to express themselves to laugh to 
cry. Free to play and learn, they have the right to play and as well as the right to learn, to educate themselves. Free to go to school and above all, free to dream. So he says that every child should get the freedom in order to go to school and uh, procure education uh, as they have the right to educate themselves and above all, they also, also should be given freedom to dream. That is, whatever their dreams are, they should be given freedom to fulfill those dreams. I have the privilege of working with many courageous people who have the same aim. Kailash Satyarthi says that he had got an advantage of working with many courageous people who had the same aim as he had and that was to fight for the rights of children. We have never given up against any threat or attack and we never will. And he says under any circumstances, he is not going to give up this uh, fight for justice for children. He would continue to fight for the rights of children throughout his life. We have made progress in last couple of decades. He says in last 20 years, a lot of progress has been made. We have reduced the number of out-of-school children by half. And by half, the number of out-of-school children have been reduced. Now, out-of-school children are children who have never been enrolled in the school, especially the primary school. We have reduced the number of child laborers by a third. So, by one third, uh, the number of child laborers have been reduced. We have reduced child mortality and malnutrition. So even child mortality, child deaths and malnutrition, that is unhealthy condition because of uh, poor nutrition or not eating enough healthy food. Due to this, uh, there was child nutrition, which has been reduced. And we have prevented billions of child deaths. Even child deaths have been prevented. But let us make no mistake, great challenges still remain. And he says that though we have um, made progress in the couple of decades, but we should not make a mistake. We should not slow down because changes are taking place, but they are taking place at a very slow pace. They are taking place very slowly. And we have many great challenges which remain before us. Friends, the biggest challenge or biggest crisis knocking on the doors of human, humankind is fear and intolerance. So Kailash Satyarthi says that what is the biggest challenge or biggest crisis, the most difficult and dangerous situation which is knocking, which is hitting, which humankind is facing today. And the first thing is fear, that is everyone feels that they are not secured. They, uh, there is no security for them. They are afraid. Along with it, there is another challenge and that is intolerance. Intolerance means not willing to allow or accept something. So people have become intolerant nowadays. They cannot accept the things. And that is again um, a very biggest challenge which is knocking on the doors of human 